integrity in business? Is it even possible given the fierceness of competition? There's this thinking I keep hearing along every walk of life, you got to do what you got to do to survive. Well, do you? Peter Thomas will be investigating this question with me over the next hour. He is author of the book, Be Great, a book about five foundations for succeeding in business without compromising your values. Peter has lived it. He has developed billions, not millions, billions of dollars in real estate projects in North America. And he is the founder and developer of Century 21 Canada. Well, the reality is, you know, if when you line up what's important in your life, okay, health is important, family is important, friends are important, relationships are important, community is important, and money is important. Well, if you had to give one of those things away that I just mentioned, you'd probably give money away first. Christine, values are very personal. Like, the, your values will not be the same as my values. You know, they don't need to be. And so how do you get your values? What are values? How do you get your values? Well, values, you know, usually are instilled in you by hopefully by your mom and dad, hopefully by some teachers, so that when you get to, say, be 15 or 16, you understand what's valuable to you, yes. it, to you as a person, you know? Like, for example, my values are health, freedom, happiness, and integrity. Those are, those are my values. And uh, everything that I do, I just sort of uh, think, well, like if, if somebody said to me, let's go to the bar and get drunk tonight, you know, I might say, you know, morally, I say, okay, fine, but I might think, Health-wise, is that good for me? Mm -hmm. So I make a choice. And they say when your values are clear, your decisions are easier. Because mm -hmm. you wouldn't do something to violate a value. Freedom. Like, for example, if, if let's say somebody offered you to, to, to rob a bank, or I talk about this in my book, or you know, to, to make some easy money, or do something that was, 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 not, not, uh, it was crooked. Well, if you think of that against the penalty of freedom, never mind a moral decision, do you, do you want to go to jail? You know, it's not hard mm -hmm. if freedom is a value. Mm -hmm. so, so you'd never do anything that would ever hurt freedom. You wouldn't do anything to hurt health if you were cognizant that that was a value. So that's why it's critically important, that exercise. And I, and I challenge everybody today to sit down with a piece of paper and write down what their life will be forever different if they write down what their values are. Peter, I've talked a lot about the importance of values in business, and, and you've highlighted a lot of what's in your book. But there are more foundations that we need to address here, like focus, like integrity, and I'd like to know what your, yes. Well, what, what I did, Christine, is uh, as I got on this journey about 10 years ago, I interviewed as many successful people as I ran into. And this, by the way, formula, what I'm talking about now, mm -hmm. isn't Peter Thomas's brilliant idea. I, this, some of this stuff comes as far back as Socrates. It's, yes. it's wisdom of the ages what we're talking about, va having values. They, they've talked about values forever, you know? It's just now coming to a time where we need to talk more about them. But it seems to be that people who live what I call successful lives, you know, good, healthy, honest, happy, mm -hmm. great lives, they need to have some tips on how to do that. Well, then you take people who seem to be doing it and people who aren't doing it. Yes. The people who are doing it seem to have one commonality that's the main commonality, and they have the ability to focus. So I talk a lot in my book about focus. Uh, you, things don't come by accident. You know, you, I have a little tip that I do in my, in, every night before I go to bed. I have what I call my MITs, my most important things for the next day. And I so put, you write those down. Correct. The, the, the things, the six things that I need to get done the next day for sure. Because there's hundreds of things you're going to do. But what are the six most important? And it could be as much as call Christine and remind her about X. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it doesn't matter... It's going to be important to you to get done. And that way you pick up all that stuff. That focuses you on what's important. So you don't get distracted by what's not important. You know, there's the urgent and the important. And a lot of people work on the urgent stuff. You, know, you get up in the morning to do, yes. to do important stuff, but urgency comes in and disrupts you. So focus, focus, focus. The next talent that people seem to have that have got it together is they can visualize. Uh, Stephen Covey said that uh, you need to begin with the end in mind. Hmm. I could tell you stories about that, but there's stories in the book, so I won't waste the time on air. But th the ability to be able to visualize, you know, that, like a real estate person walks by an empty lot mm -hmm. and he sees a finished building. He doesn't see the empty lot. Where, where's the, so he sees, well, I could build, I could do this, I could do that. Well, look, if you're going to write a book, you've got you to see yourself as a successful author with the book finished. You're going to write a play. If you're going to get a degree, see yourself getting your cap and congr congratulated by the professor, you know, at the ceremony. So try and visualize. Visualization is so critical. And I can, you must be specific. 
You must be, and the more specific you can be, the better. I remember when I was running my first marathon, and I was kind of training and practicing for it, you know? And I used to run at night, and about, it was getting dark, mm -hmm. and I was a lot of times get dejected, not feel like running, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd be running along, and I'd say, okay, Peter, you're, you're, you're actually in the Olympics, and you're coming into the stadium, and all the whole crowd is looking at the stadium. Who's that coming through the tunnel? And who is it? Who is it? It's Peter Thomas, you know? And I'd be running by myself, at night by myself by the, you know, in Victoria. But so I would visualize myself, you know, visualize myself. So when I did run the marathon in New York, you know, it felt pretty good. So vis the visualization is critical. The next point, so you've got to have values, mm -hmm. you've got to have focus, you've got to have visualization. You've got to, you've got to have inspiration. Yes. You've got to be inspired. And the people who seem to have it together get inspired. You know, they, mm -hmm. get their, they gather their inspiration. To, to, to attain their goals. The last thing, and very interesting, in, in, on these five foundations is reflection. Mm -hmm. I, and this is kind of personal, because I've found that for me, in order to, sometimes I get myself into some pretty difficult things, like, uh, like I, 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 I take out to do something that's more difficult than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Well, then I go back and I call it reflection. I look back at things that I have done, and then it doesn't seem such a big journey. Hmm. You know, in other words, if I was in business, if I was successful and built one building, and I'm building a little bit bigger building, well, I know how to get a mortgage. I know how to do all that stuff. So reflect back on that first one. If I'm in a salesman, and if I if I sold a mutual, I sell mutual funds. If I sold somebody a, a twenty dollar a month mutual fund, well, then why not a hundred dollar a month mutual fund, and go back on the success I did with the twenty dollar one. So always reflect back on your success to give you the strength so that you feel, yes, yes, I can do that. For all of you, thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>